So a line of code can be many things. It can be a brand new feature, it can be an amazing algorithm, it can be a horrible security bug, but hopefully not. It can also open whole new worlds for people. So I'll be talking about accessibility, although I won't actually be talking about the accessibility APIs, and there'll be a bit where I'm actually talking about how to make things less accessible, <laughs> but in the end, I'll get back to making it actually accessible. But I wanted to start with, I kind of hate the word accessibility. Like when I say accessibility, most people think voiceover, and that's such a narrow aspect of all of accessibility. It's this, this big umbrella term. It's basically anything that makes it so that somebody can use something easily. And there's a wide variety of things that users have access to so that they can use devices as easily as they need to. So everything for people with vision impairments, hearing impairments, physical motor difficulties, and all of these things are totally customizable so that they can make the device fit their exact needs. And I really loved what, what Microsoft uh, created this inclusive design um, graphic where it's thinking about um, impairments not just as permanent impairments like being blind or being deaf, but also that you can have temporary impairments. So you might break your arm um, or there's situational impairments where you might be in a really noisy room and you can't actually hear the video that you're trying to watch, so subtitles would be really helpful. Because when we think about accessibility, we think that it affects such a small minority of users. Because we think in these really extreme cases where it's people who are totally blind or people who are totally deaf. But when we step back from it and really look at it's all of these different people, and everybody basically needs accessibility at some point in their lives. So I can't cover every single aspect of accessibility in 18 minutes, sadly. <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mostly focus on, on vision, because iPhones and watches and Macs and the Apple TV, they're very visual devices. Uh, so it can sometimes, as a developer, if you don't really understand what the person's going through, it can be pretty confusing to know what you need to do. And the problem I kind of found was people don't understand how complex vision is. And the more and more I researched kind of all sorts of different visual problems, I realized, man, it's amazing that we can actually see it all. Because <laughs> there are some weird things that your eyes and your brain can do. So vision isn't this really simple, like on and off kind of thing. Like we think about like blindness, and most people think, oh, if somebody's blind, they can't see anything at all. But that's only about five percent of people who are blind. The other ninety-five percent can still see something. But it's really easy for us to kind of empathize with that because we can close our eyes and kind of pretend what it would be like. We can also kind of understand how things get blurry and fuzzy. So we can empathize with people who maybe have really poor kind of long-sighted vision. But when it gets more complicated than that, that's where we don't really know what to do. So I was trying to solve this problem, and I created this visual impairment simulator, which is an augmented reality app for the phone and it basically lets you try on different visual impairments. And so I wrote this for a few workshops at some conferences, and basically you get to try, try the uh, headset on with the augmented reality app running, and then you have to try to use your phone with, with the visual impairment on. So this is an example um, of the macular degeneration uh, kind of filter. So it's split screen, because. Normally, you wear it in the headset. Um, yeah, so it becomes really impossible to read the text on the screen. But you can, you can actually get around it quite, quite easily just by inverting the colors on your phone. And there's quite a few, like, little minor, they're not, it's not voiceover. Like, you'd almost think 
that somebody who has this kind of visual condition would need to use voiceover, but they can actually get on fine just with like larger text and increasing contrast and, and invert colors. And so during my kind of demoing this at different conferences last year, I was in Berlin and it was a really sunny day, like one of those days where it's so sunny that you feel like you're physically closer to the sun, but you're not. <laughs> and I had pulled my phone out and I was checking like a text and the kind of sun hit off my phone and into my eyes. And I got that kind of spot and I was like, oh, that's, that's not so good. Um, and yes, I was a totally irresponsible person. <laughs> Because I, I kind of thought, oh, it'll, it'll be okay, it'll go away. And I didn't go to the eye doctor immediately, and I kind of just waited and waited and waited. Um, and so I basically had this like dark spot in the middle of my left eye, like quite a big dark spot. Um, and I normally wear glasses uh, for my right eye because my, the vision kind of sucks. Um, but because of this dark spot, it actually meant that I couldn't wear my glasses because for some reason it just gave me headaches. So now, not only did I have this annoying dark spot in the middle of my left eye, I couldn't really see things clearly with my right eye. So because I'd been running the visual impairment workshops, I would learned that invert colors is a good place to start, so I turned invert colors on on my phone, and then I increased the text size and was sad to see how few apps actually use dynamic type. But when I did eventually get back to London about a month later, <laughs> I did finally go get an eye exam. And I'd only gotten one a few months before I'd went away anyway, so it was fairly up to date. And um, we go through the, the eye chart, and I think, I think I'd lost like three lines, like I could only read three lines higher than I had before, so it was quite a bad, degradation of my vision. And then the optometrist pulled out a piece of graph paper, and I was like, what's going on? Nobody's ever done this to me in an eye exam before. So she said, okay, like, cover up your right eye and, and look at the graph paper and focus on the black dot in the middle. I'm like, okay. She's like, do all the lines look straight? Yeah, of course, it's graph paper. <laughs> She's like, okay, now cover up your, cover up your right eye. And, and try it again. And man, I hadn't even realized that my vision was so distorted on my left eye. All I really had seen was this kind of dark spot. Um, so it was quite worrying to also see that, although I was weirdly excited, because I was like, yes, I can make my visual impairment simulator better. <laughs> and the optometrist was like, you're weird. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so yeah, so even though I thought I had understood how complex visual impairments were, I hadn't even come close. Um, not that I want more visual impairments, and it has actually healed now and it's fine, so I don't have a dark spot in the middle of my left vision. But I do want to show quickly um, how you can simulate visual impairments uh, through code. So, uh, this is a very, very basic project that at the moment, just kind of has some boilerplate code for setting up a camera session. And we'll be using GPU image in a second, but for the, f the first part, all I want to do is actually create kind of that dark spot. We don't have to do anything clever. <laughs> we can just use an image view. Um, so, yep, all we're doing is creating an image view for that. And then, of course, we need to make sure it actually gets added as a subview. So I'll show you quickly what that looks like. OK. So yes, that is basically what it is like to have this big, awful <laughs> dark spot in the middle of your vision. Can't really see a huge amount out <laughs> into the audience, though, because the lights are quite bright. But yeah. It can make it quite challenging to like talk to somebody who's right in front of you. It uh, makes it tricky to check the time on your watch, <laughs> which is generally why I would have like a slightly better watch face. But yeah, so that's just the dark spot, which was the only thing I kind of thought I had at the beginning. 
And it wasn't until the kind of second thing where it was like, ooh, the distortion. So we'll add the distortion now. So I'm going to go down to the setup camera feed. And GPU image uh, is incredibly awesome and powerful, and it only takes a couple of lines of code to basically create this distortion that I had. So yeah, I create this distortion, set the scale, add it into uh, as a filter. And now, so we have both. So you can see, not so fun <laughs> in Xcode. And I actually have the graph paper as well. So you can see a bit better about how much it actually distorts. And yeah, still checking the watch, not so fun. <laughs> cool. So it's very easy to, to create these kinds of effects uh, just using something like GPU image. But it got me thinking that if I can basically like give somebody a visual impairment, can I take it away from them? So before I did computer-y stuff, I did audio stuff. And I actually did my dissertation in active noise cancelling headphones. And the premise of noise cancellation is if you take one sound wave and you take it and you shift it 180 degrees out of phase and you play them at the same time, that they cancel each other out. So I thought, hmm, I wonder if that would work for like a visual distortion. I mean, because that's basically how glasses work, is it just compensates the other way. So I thought, hmm, I wonder if that will work. Let's see if it does. <laughs> so just so I also wanted to make it so it's a little easier to see, because what we're basically trying to do is just compensate for the distortion. So I've removed it. I've removed the dark spot, so all we can see is the distortion, which is quite severe. And now, all we're going to do is basically add that same distortion, but instead of doing 0.2, <laughs> doing negative 0.2. <laughs> Will it work? So we'll look at our graph paper. So this is the combination of both bulges, which actually does pretty much cancel out. It's still a little. There's some kind of wavy lines a tiny bit. But you know, that's quite amazing that you can do something like that with an iPhone and a couple lines of code. Yeah. So. These iPhones that we carry around in our pockets are incredibly amazing computers that can handle way more than what we generally ask them to do. Um, I'm so glad people don't make fart apps anymore, but like, come on. <laughs> you can make something so incredible with this little phone that costs like a couple hundred euros. Um, no? Oh, well, not the iPhone 10. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to be paying that one off for a while. Um, but, you know, you, like 10 years ago, if you wanted to try to do something like this, we're just, you know, making something that would simulate visual impairments. Gosh, the amount of, like, hardware that you'd need and specialty developers who can program all sorts of stuff, it would have cost way more than even the cost of an iPhone 10. <laughs> uh, so it's really important to to kind of take a step back and think about what you're making. You know, you can be making things that basically create whole new worlds for people or, or take them away. Um, but we have this incredible power to make things that can change people's lives. And part of the reason why I got into programming was because I really loved solving problems. Um, but if you're, if you're trying to solve something, don't just solve it for like one person. Make sure you're solving it for everybody. Thank you.